Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new theory and speculation video. Today, I'm going to be going over my ideas about future expansions for the five nations we visited in Genshin. There are quite a few locations in each nation that we haven't visited yet, so I thought I'd go over them and what we could see in the future. Now, this video does contain spoilers for the quests listed on screen now, so if you haven't done those, you have been warned. With all that said though, let's get right into the video. Starting off with Mondstadt, we currently know of two locations that haven't been added to the game, Dornman Port and the Dandelion Sea. From what we know, Dornman Port is located quite far away from the city of Mondstadt. According to Henry Morton, it was too far away for him to sail to the nameless island from Dornman Port. During Vine Laser Fest, the route to Dornman Port from Mondstadt City had to be constantly patrolled by Eula and the rest of the Knights of Vonius Reconnaissance Company. Of course, it's also quite far from Port Ormos in Sumeru, with the vendors there worrying that fruits on a journey to or from Dornman Port could spoil during the trip. Now, I believe Dorman Port may be at the northernmost point of Mondstadt. Perhaps it could be along a channel that connects the main Sea of Tevat to the sea between Liwa, Sumeru, and Fontaine. This could be where ships enter this sea to reach Lumidos Harbor and Yilong Wharf. This same channel could also act as the border between Mondstadt and Snezhnaya. Perhaps after Natlin releases, we'll get the Dorman Port expansion as our gateway to Snezhnaya. Anyways, we do know that the Abyss Order has had some operations up in the area around Dormant Port in the past. During this time, Yanfei started investigating a shipment of theirs, unknowingly putting herself in danger. Luckily, she was saved by Eula, and the two worked together to capture the Abyss Order operatives in the area. Another character with connections to this area would be Mona, who was actually born here. She of course later found Barbaloth and eventually moved to Mondstadt City. Still, I think both Eula and Mona could make appearances in Dormant Port, and perhaps some new characters from Mondstadt as well. We could get quests with them where we investigate the Abyss Order, and may even be able to see where they got the defiled statue seen in We Will Be Reunited. Now, as I said, there is also the Dandelion Sea. Currently, not much is known about this area, and it hasn't even been confirmed to be real. Still, I think it could be real, and that it might be hidden away somewhere, similar to the Eternal Oasis. Perhaps this area could be very important to Venti and Istaroth, and could even be featured in Venti's second story quest. Moving on to Liyue though, there is quite a bit of room for expansions. We did just get Chenyu Vale, so these expansions probably won't happen for a while, but I still wanted to talk about them. First off, we could get an expansion to the northeast of Liwa. Since the game launched, there has been a gap between Shingsa Village and Storm Terror's Lair. Either Mondstadt or Liwa could be expanded into this area, but I think at least the bottom part will be Liwa, just enough to fill the hole. We could also get a bit more Chenyu Vale, but I think the majority of this space will be saved for Mondstadt expansions. There could also be a bit more Chenyu Vale to the west, but again, I think this space will be saved for Fontaine and Sumeru. As for an area of Liyue that could be greatly expanded, let's look to the south. Down here, we could get the Blackcliff Forge as an expansion. Currently, there is a bit of the Blackcliff Forge in the game, but there could easily be more than what we see. After all, both the Blackcliff series and the Prototype series of weapons were made here, and the white tassels used by the Millilith are all produced here. So, I would really like to see a huge forging area, complete with furnaces, along with some mines and caverns. Additionally, an expansion to the south would allow us to access the southern beaches of Liwa. We could then sail from Port Ormos to Liwa Harbor, and if there's a channel up in Mondstadt like I mentioned earlier, we could sail all the way to Lumidos Harbor. There is a lot of potential for expansion to the south, as there is currently a huge ocean there, so there could be a lot of content added here. Also, we could finally be able to visit the out-of-bounds house that sits outside the world border. I doubt this house is important or anything, I just think it's funny. Next up on our expansion journey, let's talk about Inazuma. 
Now, unless they add more islands, there isn't much room for an Inazuma expansion. I have theorized on how they could add more islands to Inazuma with lore reasons in a previous video, so if you want to learn more, I recommend checking that out. Still, instead of adding islands, I think it would be more plausible for us to travel into the Dark Sea. The Dark Sea is any place outside of the continent of Tevat that is not under the jurisdiction of the Seven, and Inazuma is on its border. Now, we have actually been to places in the Dark Sea before, including Ankonomiya and the Golden Apple Archipelago. These locations are just scratching the surface on what we could see out there though, as there is so much potential for interesting sights and lore. Firstly, many of the gods who lost the Archon War ended up fleeing to the Dark Sea. It has been suggested that many of them died later from unknown causes, but there could still be some left alive. Therefore, we could get quests revolving around these gods. Since they do not follow the Seven, they may be more willing to tell us about Celestia and their secrets. However, thanks to the dangers of the Dark Sea, they may have gone mad at this point and may be aggressive against the Traveler or anyone else who gets too close. So, you may think it would be better for us if all the guards out here were already dead. However, that may not be any better, as their lingering energies could be harmful to us on our journey. Moving on from these gods though, we also know that the Dark Sea was once home to palaces built by the Sealy. These days though, the palaces are likely in ruin, with the Sealy that built them being husks of their former selves. Perhaps there is hope for them though, as we could help bring them home to their courts and even help restore their palaces. Maybe if we can restore certain parts of their palaces, some Sealy could regain their memories and intelligence. Now, there is one more person who I believe could be in the Dark Sea, Mikoshi Chio. Long ago, Chio was a friend and ally of the Raiden Shogun, but that all changed during the Cataclysm. She would be swallowed by a beast of sin, and even though she managed to escape, she became corrupted and fought against the Shogun. The Shogun won the battle, cutting off Chio's arm and horn before Chio fled. At the moment, her ultimate fate is unknown. There are rumors that she was slain by the Tengu, the Shumatsuban, the Iwakura clan, or even the Magu Kenki. However, none of this has been confirmed, so it is possible that she escaped to the Dark Sea and remains there to this day. Heading over to Sumeru though, this nation could be expanded in quite a few ways. Starting with the hole between Sumeru, Liwa, and Fontaine, this is where Baida Harbor would be located. Based on the name Baida, which means a desert without water or grass, part of this expansion will include desert, but there is still room for more forest. Also, this area could be the location of another village in Sumeru, potentially the one where Layla is from. Now, this area is also located above the fallen nation of Conria, with a door that leads to Conria pointing towards the empty hole. As such, I believe this expansion could give us more lore about Conria. We could get another Ruin Golem here, or even more advanced technology left behind by Conria after the Cataclysm. There could be quite a good amount of lore from records left behind here, so I hope that we will get to see something like this. Now, besides expanding to the north, Sumeru could also expand to the south and the west. An expansion to the south could connect to the Liyue expansion I mentioned earlier, but it could also add more forest below Ashivan Realm, connecting it to the desert some more and also to the ocean. As for the westward expansion, we would get a bit more desert here that connects Sumeru to Natlan. However, since the desert is already so big, we could instead have an ocean between Sumeru and Natlan. That way, there wouldn't be too much desert, but still enough space for Notlon to the west. Currently, I think our way into Notlon will be the ocean at Samurda coast, but we'll just have to wait and see. Now then, it's time to move on to expansions for the most recent nation add to the game, Fontaine. We know that there will be at least one more expansion for Fontaine before Natlon, as we still don't have enough Hydroculi to fully level up our Statues of the Seven, and the Fountain of Lucene is still locked at level 40. As for where this expansion could be, I have a few ideas. Firstly, Fontaine could expand below the Plateau of Water to have locations across from Baida Harbor in Sumeru. 
While this would help fix the hole in the map, I don't know how much Fontaine will be below the Plateau of Water, and I think my other ideas are more likely. There is still a bit of plateau to explore in the northeast, so we could get an expansion past the Fontaine Research Institute. Still, I think the most likely option would be to the west of Fontaine, past Mount Isis. Not only would this finally give us the tallest peak in Fontaine, but it could also give us Petrichor. Petrichor was one of the very first things we knew about Fontaine, but we still haven't seen it in-game. Now, Petrichor is home to a majestic waterfall, which could be from Mount Isis, but it could also be possible that the waterfall is the plateau itself. Again, I don't know how much Fontaine we will get below the plateau, but it's still a possibility. Anyways, we have been told that the areas surrounding Petrichor are also home to many ruins and stone statues relating to Remuria and the Golden Troop. As such, there could be an entrance to the fallen civilization somewhere in the area. For those of you who don't know, Remuria was the civilization that existed in Fontaine before Egeria became the first Hydro Archon. It was ruled by the god king Remus, and though it was prosperous for a time, Remus did make some enemies. The dragon king Scylla would lead a rebellion against Remuria, and the ensuing battle would cause Remuria to fall into the abyss. We do know that some Remurians and Bishop survived the fall, so the ruins of Remuria could still be around. Perhaps we could travel down there to uncover the lore of that time period and find out more about Remus. This could even be part of a quest with Dainsleth, and perhaps the Abyss Order is active down in Remuria. We could potentially even meet Skirk again down here, and learn more about the Third Descender and the origin of the Gnosis. Anyways, that's pretty much it for my thoughts on expanding the five nations that are currently in Genshin. If you want to hear more of my thoughts on any of the lore I mentioned in this video, I have a bunch of videos for each nation. For Mondstadt, I have Dormen Port in the Dandelion Sea, Istaroth, Lord Barbados, and a return to Mondstadt. For Liua, I have Rex Lapis and a return to Liua. For Inazuma, I have the Ring of Fire, Rainé and Makoto, and a return to Inazuma. For Sumeru, I have Flower of Paradise Lost, Vorukasha's Glow, and Kusanali and Ruka Devada. For Fontaine, I have Remuria, Marchose Hunter, Golden Troop, and Song of Days Past. I also have the Seven Wonders series, which goes over the lore of various wonderful locations all throughout Tabat. I would love to hear what ideas you all have for future expansions in the comments below as well. Anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.